I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 16, and let's focus on verses 9 through 12. Then Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and cut his head off. And the king replied, Sons of Zeruiah, do we agree on anything? He curses me this way because the Lord told him, curse David. Therefore, who can say, why did you do that? And then David said to Abishai and to all of his servants, look, my own son, my own flesh and blood intends to take my life. How much more now this Benjamite? Leave him alone and let him curse me. The Lord has told him to. Perhaps the Lord will see my iniquity and restore goodness to me instead of Shammai's curses today. Now Shammai was certain that the Lord was paying back David for all the solish blood that he had shed and that the Lord was giving Absalom the kingdom. Finally, Shammai's trash talking became too much and Abishai, who was Joab's brother, turns to David and asks for permission to cut Shammai's head off. After all, it's hard to talk trash without a head. (laughs) David argued that the Lord had ordered Shimei to curse him. Instead of shutting up Shimei by force, David sought for relief elsewhere. 2 Samuel 19 verse 12, Perhaps the Lord will see my affliction and restore goodness to me instead of Shimei's curses today. Now take a moment to feel the gravity of that statement. What is it that David wants the Lord to see? That he's more righteous than Shimei? That he's more righteous than any of these other people? No, David wanted the Lord to see David's own sin. And here is the secret of David's peace. David had a deep-seated confidence in a God of unpredictable grace. A God who has a tendency to replace cursing with goodness. And David assumes that the Lord has this strangely wonderful way of looking upon guilt and yet returning blessing instead of a curse. Now, if the mouth of God had declared David uh, David deserved punishment, perhaps the eye of God may choose to spare him from it. How can David even begin to think like this? Notice how David isn't really sure. He uses the word perhaps. David confesses the Lord's freedom to choose. God may or he may not bless me. But can't you see that David could never have said perhaps, never even conceive the unknown possibility unless he already had experienced the known character of God? How can David even dream like this unless he actually knows a God like that? And unless David knows that he is a man himself after God's own heart. You can't imagine how deep and how wide and how available that God's compassion is for you. Even when he disciplines us for our sin, which we deserve discipline for. It was not a sure thing, but David knew enough about God to try. Now, shouldn't this come as a special hope for us today? Those of us Christians, who believe that we've made a royal mess of our own lives. Those of us who have smashed God's commandments and defiled His standards and then suffered miserably for it. Repentance and forgiveness have come to us through Jesus. And yet so often, uh, uh, we're just only sure that God is barely tolerating us, much less that He even loves us. And sometimes we doubt that he's even tolerating us. Are we truly banned to the junkyard because of our sin? Perhaps we should pause and stare at God as David sees him. What if we had a God who can look at guilt and return good if he so desires? Well, we do, and perhaps he will. Romans 3 verses 21 through 26. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is being revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned 
and fall short of the glory of God, being justified then freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation, a full payment by His blood through faith to demonstrate His righteousness, because in His forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time His righteousness, that He might be just, that is one who judges rightly, and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. I'm Steve Wiggins and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And if you're being ministered to through the daily teaching of Groundworks Ministries, and you would like to help us lead God's people back to the Bible, would you consider donating to Groundworks Ministries today? We need your support now more than ever. Donating is secure and it's easy at our website. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.